Today, we're talking about the top five reasons that you should be using Azure SQL Manage Instance on Tales from the Field. You grow hard about what you want to be. Step four. Fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. If this is your first time making it over to Tales from the Field, give us a like and give us a subscribe. We drop content every week. On Monday, we have an MS Tech Bits. On Tuesday, we have our Azure Data Community Roundtable, where we share links, videos, anything that is created by the creators in the Azure Data Community for the Azure Data Community. And then on Wednesday, we have another MS Tech Bits. Those are videos that help you on a particular technical subject, and you are watching one of those right now. Let's get over to the content. We're going to start with five reasons that you should be using SQL Manage Instance. Trust me, there's a lot more than five, but I've had some conversations lately and there was an MVP who wasn't even aware of the service. And I thought, how can this be? Azure Manage Instance is amazing. So let's talk about five reasons why you would want to use this. And if you're migrating to Azure, why you should consider this. So here I am in my Azure SQL Manage instance. I've got my baseball analytics in my Laham database. And what I want to show is that I can do cross database queries. My first query, I'm going to select dimension teams from baseball analytics and get a list of teams. As you can see, there's quite a few names, but there's been a history of teams. So if I want to combine the analytics from these two databases, retrosheets.org and the Laham database, I need to utilize the table over in Laham for team franchises. As you can see, we've got a lot of franchises with active teams and non-active teams because we've got some interesting names over the history of time. So I'm going to execute this cross database query and I get all of this back. doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you need this functionality and you want to pass service, Azure SQL Manage Instance is the service you want to use. Number four is migrate with minimal downtime. This is very important because we want to go to a new environment. We want to take advantage of new features, but we don't want to be down for long. Well, SQL Manage Instance has you covered there. We have the Log Replay Service. The Log Replay Service is basically like log shipping, but much stronger. You do a full backup, and sure, you send your logs across, but you can also send your differential backups across. As a matter of fact, you could just point your backups to an Azure Blob storage account and using continuous backup with log replay service, you've got the capability to just continually restore that database. So when you need to cut over, you are very, very close. Next up, of course, there's SQL MI Link. This is a new feature that was introduced around SQL Server 2022, but it has to do with Manage Instance. It gives us the capability to take an on-premise SQL Server or an Azure Virtual Machine and to be able to use MI Link to make it an asynchronous copy of the database that is constantly being updated. What we can do with this is this minimizes our downtime, just like an always on availability group, where we can fail over and we can utilize this. Now in SQL Server 2022, we have support for this, but we've also made this backwards compatible. So there's support for SQL 2019, SQL Server 2016 as well. 2017 is coming, don't worry. And then with SQL Server 2022, the big news, we've got the capability to be able to fail back and fail forward. That's something that's currently being worked on. And that's going to be just revolutionary because you could use Azure as your DR scenario and then fail back to on-prem when you're done with your DR testing. Or if you got a big event like a Black Friday coming up, and maybe you've only got 24 cores on your local server and you want to fill up to Azure, take advantage of up to 80 cores or high compute cores or high memory cores, depending on your workload. I'm getting a little ahead of myself with the hardware configurations, but you can see where I'm going with this, right? Easy to be able to customize. Last up, we've got the data migration service online. So it has a capability for data migration service to have an online migration capability, which once again allows you to be able to fail over using an asynchronous uh, technology mode, like always on availability groups. So we've got you covered on multiple different ways to be able to migrate with minimal downtime for Azure SQL Manage Instance.
Number three is a big one, hardware flexibility. So this is the promise of the cloud. This is the capability for us to be able to scale up, scale down, change service tiers, which means change some of the underlying compute and infrastructure that we use, kind of like swapping out a hard drive for an SSD, having the capability to transition to high compute or high memory, things of that nature. It's absolutely amazing, and you have that capabilities. Previously, if you were just on-prem trying to do this, you're talking about all new big configurations that you'd have to build out or all new underlying hardware you'd have to install to be able to capitalize on virtual machines. So, for example, I'm over in my Azure portal. I'm going to go click on Compute and Storage. And when I do that, I can immediately begin to configure things. I'm currently on general purpose. Let's change over to business critical. Um, I've got hardware generation standard with 5.1 memory or premium isolate cores or 13.1 gig. I've got V cores that I could scale up to 80 or I could scale down. Now, there's something I do want to keep in mind, right? When I talk about changing from general purpose to business critical or business critical back to general purpose, that's a big deal. That's not an insignificant change. And that's something I want to make sure that I do note. You are changing the underlying physical storage. Your data has to be copied over to it. It's supposed to be an online um, copy capability. So your instance should be online while you're making your movement. But at the same time, you just want to make sure that you realize that you're essentially taking all your data and you're copying it to a new place. But you have that capability to go, you know what? I'd like to have much higher IOPS, so I'm going to start using business critical. We have the different hardware capabilities to give you some options, whether CPU is something that you need, whether you need to utilize more memory in a relationship per core to be able to have to maximize that per instance. We also have some regional guidelines on where the increased memory is available, because as we all know, SQL Server loves memory. All right. On to the next one. Number two, pause your dev test instances. Wow. Talk about cool. We're in the cloud. And if we've got a dev test subscription, first off, it's like developer edition. We're not paying for our license for SQL Manage instance. Then on top of it, when I'm not using it, I can pause it. That's fantastic. Now I'm not paying for compute. I'm just paying for the storage associated with my instance. So let's head back over to the Azure portal. I'm going to stop my instance. That's right. I'm going to stop my instance. I'm going to click yes, that I want to stop my instance. And you can see it immediately stop, stop, starts stopping. Also, I've got start stop scheduling. I can create a schedule if I know there's a certain point in time I want to pause my manage instance during the day. And, you know, if I'm going to pause it, I should probably set a time zone. That's right. This is not UTC dependent. You can pause based off your time zone and put your start stop schedule. Wow. What a great way. And my instance is already paused. This is fantastic. OK, let's go on to the next one. Never upgrade SQL again. Seriously, let me say that one more time because I don't think you heard me in the back rows. Never upgrade SQL again. That's massive. I got to tell you, I don't know how many times in my career I spent overnight up early having to sit there and work on upgrading SQL Server, migrating so that way we can minimize our downtime with a PaaS instance of SQL Server, Azure SQL Manage instance, Azure SQL Database as well, the latest and greatest features are coming directly to you. Now, I'm going to show you a quick example of how the relational engine continues to get updated. Keep in mind that not all features are 100% in parity, um, RIP big clusters, right? Big data clusters. That's never something that's going to make it to Azure because you would just use a Spark compute that we have in Azure instead. So the feature has to make sense if it's something that we're going to be offering within SQL Server. But as proof, let me go over to my SQL instance and I'm going to go to the Layham database. I'm going to right click and click properties. I'm going to open up database options. And one of the things I want us to see, we go to options and then we're going to look at the compatibility level. The compatibility level, you can see is set to 160 
2022 support, but I've got range all the way back to 2008. Now, why is this important? This shows that what we're doing is we're taking the compatibility level, which is important for relational engine support for features, and we're making sure that you have a pathway forward to be able to migrate, but then be able to upgrade and take use of that. For example, intelligent query processing. Intelligent query processing requires compatibility level 150, if not 160. And some of the future things that are coming for SQL Server will require a higher compatibility level. But part of the way that you can tell that we're going to get those investments and you're going to get those features and functionality is that we continue to upgrade and improve. So there we have it. Never upgrade SQL again. So what did we cover? We covered number five, cross database queries incredibly important functionality. And if you need to have them, you need SQL manage instance. Number four, migrate with minimal downtime. Really, really key to understand that we can make it over to Azure SQL manage instance. Very easy, very simple. Number three, hardware flexibility. Change out our physical hardware at the click of a button. Pause. Number two, pause and resume. Wow. The ability for us to be able to pause when we are not using our managed instance, especially in dev test, then we're only paying for storage. And number one, never upgrade SQL again. Can't say that enough. Uh, number of headaches that that solves for a DBA is fantastic. All right. Did you like what you saw? You know where we like to keep this going? In the comments down below, sound off. Is there something you'd like us to dive into deeper? Was this helpful? First top five, right? So let me know if you'd like to see more of these. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great week. Take care of everybody out there. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up.